Hey, what is up people? Welcome to my first smartphone inspector show. Today I will give you my thoughts on the LG G4 that I've been using for a few weeks now and walk you through the latest smartphone news and rumors. You've probably seen my unboxing and camera comparison video of the G4 against the S6 from Samsung. If you haven't, check them out on my channel. After using the G4 for a few weeks now, I can tell you the good and bad things about this phone. Let's start with the good. I love the unboxing experience with lots of nice goodies inside a luxurious box. What I also like about the phone is the optional leather back. My advice to you is to shell out those extra 50 bucks to get a genuine leather back because it totally gives the phone a premium feel and look. Another benefit is that you also get a plastic backup cover so you have the best of both worlds. Camera performance is on par with the S6 and this means that you get one of the best cameras you can currently get on a smartphone. It beats the S6 in low light and it also beats it with its higher resolution selfie cam. Furthermore, the large removable battery, the ability to expand your storage with a micro SD card is wonderful and very rare nowadays in flagship territory. Call quality is very good on my unit and while the speaker is on the back, it is nice and loud. I prefer it of the one found in the S6. The large 5.5 inch display is very good for an LCD type of screen and it's pleasant to use outside when it's sunny but it doesn't cut it against the Super AMOLED of the S6 with its amazing contrast and deep blacks. While the screen of the G4 is good, it also has its downsides. For example screen responsiveness. As you can see here the G4 doesn't register screen touches as quickly as the S6 does which makes it unpleasant to use if you browse on challenging websites. I love the fact that you can operate the S6 with your fingernails so that you don't smudge the display with your fingerprints. This is not possible with the G4. Another thing which annoys me is the fact that its curved back makes the phone wobble a lot when you place it on a table. I like to use my phone every now and then when it's flat on a table. On the other hand, it fits great in the palm of your hand where it will be most of the time. The UI also has its good and bad sides. The good is that it allows for some customization, like with the configurable on-screen navigation buttons. But the UI also looks a little cartoonish out of the box. The settings menu reminds me a lot of older Galaxy S series, with the four tabs at the top in the settings menu. Some things clearly need an overhaul. So to sum up this phone, it's great value for the price LG charges you. The camera is a big improvement of the G3, the leather back is wonderful and the fact that you can put extra storage inside is not to be underestimated. So if you can live with the shortcomings I mentioned in this video, you really can't go wrong with this phone. An 8 out of 10 smartphone inspector score. So let's walk through this week's smartphone news and rumors. Starting off with the OnePlus 2. An image has been leaked of the phone which will succeed the OnePlus 1. The current OnePlus 1 was marketed as the flagship killer when it was introduced and for a large part it was, especially if you consider the low price. With this phone, OnePlus will really need to step up their game to be a flagship killer once again. The device looks largely the same with the 5.5 inch screen. The CPU will most likely be an improved version of the Snapdragon 810, which seems to run cooler, so it's able to perform better under heavy load. I also hope OnePlus will get rid of the invite system, now that they have established themselves as a brand with a loyal fanbase. Next up, iPhone 6s rumors are starting to build up. We are hearing rumors of force touch technology implemented on the next iPhone. Big improvements are expected in the camera department, with a 12 megapixel sensor and possibly a dual camera setup for some nice bulky effects. The 6S will be running the new iOS 9 operating system and hopefully it will come with 2GB of RAM. And then the news came to us that engineers from Samsung have found a way to almost double battery capacity of lithium ion batteries. So this means your shiny smartphones will last twice as long without the added bulk of thick batteries. The new technology boils down to a new method of coating battery cathodes with graphene. Samsung have finally found a way to use it in a commercially viable way. Expect this tech to be in your smartphones in about 3 years. So this was it for my first smartphone inspector show. Lots more shows to come so make sure to subscribe and if you like this video give me a thumbs up below. Thanks for watching and greetings from Holland.